So do you have any stories of prostate cancer patients who have had prostatitis in your practice? Yeah, thanks, Alex. This is a really um, somewhat difficult area of being a prostate oncologist, having to deal with men that are running high PSA levels. Most of our patients have prostate cancer, and as I'm sure our audience is aware, there are many types of prostate cancer that can be monitored uh, without treatment, and we use PSA monitoring to keep track of them. Prostatitis causes the PSA to act in a wonky fashion, and one of our standby standard methods for monitoring is sort of out the window. Uh, let me just share a quick story about a patient of mine from uh, Hawaii. Diagnosed back in 2007, he, uh, 75-year-old attorney now, um, PSA was only five. He had an ultrasound showing a uh, normal-sized prostate. We talked about big prostates causing high PSA, but this man had a normal-sized prostate. In 2007, his PSA was normal. For a 42cc gland, his PSA was uh, about five, which is fine. Uh, he did have a biopsy showing favorable intermediate risk prostate cancer, three plus four equals seven, with 10% uh, grade four in one core from the right side uh, apical part of his gland. Uh, he had a history of what we call acute prostatitis. Acute prostatitis means that someone can feel something. They're sore, they have a fever, or difficulty urinating, and he was treated with antibiotics and he got better, as oftentimes acute prostatitis responds nicely to that. So his, uh, he had several biopsies over the years, and it always came back showing Gleason 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, and he was on Proscar during this time. Proscar is a medicine that blocks dihydrotestosterone, and it lowers PSA. So we talked about how his PSA was normal at 5 for a 40cc prostate, but for someone on Proscar, that's actually abnormal because we're supposed to double the PSA. And indeed, when he stopped the Proscar, I think it was around 2017, his PSA went up to 10, and then it went up to 16. And, it, and with his history of prostate cancer, this made everyone nervous. And he wasn't having any urinary symptoms that would suggest acute prostatitis. Had another MRI, he had another targeted biopsy, three plus three, nothing serious. And at one point, his PSA got all the way up to 20. And so, Fortunately, there's a new type of technology out that we've been talking about called PSMA PET scans, and these PET scans can detect cancer anywhere in the body, and we wanted to make sure that his cancer hadn't spread and that we were missing something with this high PSA. And uh, thankfully, the PSMA PET scan showed only uptake in the right area of the prostate, where his biopsies have been positive, and nowhere else in his body, to our great relief. So this is the sort of thing we struggle with in men that have low-grade cancer and high PSAs. They're not symptomatic. We call it chronic prostatitis. And it's pretty much the only thing we can use to explain why his PSA runs so high. He doesn't have a big prostate. He doesn't have a bad prostate cancer. Therefore, he has an inflammatory process, and some of his biopsies have shown some inflammation. Tough situation, but not at all uncommon. A lot of patients that are on active surveillance deal with these erratic PSAs due to background noise from their prostatitis. So you mentioned that your patient was on Proscar. So what was that about? What was, what was that being used for? When PSA levels are running high, we know that Proscar can lower PSA in men that have enlarged prostates. And it doesn't lower PSA very well in men that have cancer. So it's tempting to administer some Proscar, otherwise known as finasteride, avidard, or dutasteride. These are all the same category. Uh, to see if the PSA level will come down uh, to validate that it is a prostatitis problem and not a cancer problem. The problem with these medicines, of course, is that they are known to inhibit or suppress libido. And uh, so men's sex drive can really taper off while they're on these medicines. Not in everybody, probably 25-30% of men. So whenever I prescribe them, I warn them about that and tell them to stop it if that problem appears. But, uh, but it can be handy, and we did see that in uh, this uh, patient who, uh, whose PSA was maintained in the 4 to 5 range for a long time until when he stopped it, then it ballooned up to 15, even 20, and uh, indicating that, uh, once again, less likely to be a cancer problem, more likely to be a inflammation problem.
So Dr. Scholz, in the case that you read, you talked about the PSMA PET scan, and that is new technology, this incredible imaging that's come out lately, and we're waiting for FDA approval here in the US. But can you talk about how impactful that imaging is on now being able to tell whether it's an enlarged prostate, whether it's prostatitis, or just really being able to clarify that it is the cancer where it is? Yeah, well, of course, being a cancer doctor, most of my patients, uh, we have hundreds and hundreds of men that have low-grade prostate cancers that are on monitoring. And if their PSA starts misbehaving, then uh, we get quite concerned. And we've always had to deal with the possibility that we're missing something. You know, is it not showing up on an MRI? Is it not showing up on an ultrasound? Is it, are we missing it on a biopsy? Is there high-grade cancer lurking in a corner or even in some other part of the body? Maybe it's even spread. Uh, and this is what goes through everybody's minds, patients and doctors alike, when the PSA runs high. And so this new scan is so accurate and, uh, and it's very sensitive. So it, we have found it quite comforting in these patients that are running high PSAs, presumably from uh, chronic prostatitis, that uh, when the scan shows that there's only a small spot of cancer in the prostate where we expect it to be, and it's nowhere else in the body, that, uh, that we're still on the right track, that we are calling it prostatitis and we're not being fooled and, uh, and lulled into thinking there's not a problem with the cancer when actually there could be. Uh, the scans are so much more accurate than the ones we had in the past. It's very comforting to know that there's nothing outside the prostate. So these PSMA PET scans, um, we're still waiting for them to kind of be widespread in the U.S. Can you see those same nodes in a 3T MRI and can that be the same confirmation as a PSMA scan would be? Uh, the problem with MRIs for detecting abnormal lymph nodes with cancer is they have to be uh, so chock full of cancer that they need to enlarge over half an inch in diameter. So by then, you know, you're really dealing with something that's become somewhat advanced. It's too late. You don't want to wait around for an MRI to show an enlarged lymph node. You want to find the cancer a lot earlier than that. And this is the advantage of the PSMA PET scan is so you can pick up spots that are three or four millimeters across. Thanks for watching. If you would like more information about anything we spoke about today, you can visit our website at pcri.org for more information. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have all sorts of prostate cancer videos coming out every single week.